the impact of the vaccine on our economy? Um, see, when it comes to the stock market, there's really not a, a good direct correlation of the economy and the stock market right now. But as far as the vaccine, I believe, for one, we have to scale down the cases. Scaling down the cases, it's not going to, the vaccine is not going to wipe away people from getting COVID, new COVID cases. So at some point, we have to mandate some type of mask order or some type of shutdown or I'm not saying I advise anybody to do a shutdown, a national shutdown, but um, I definitely think coupled with the vaccine, people can have that confidence to go back out and want to put money into the market, the economy. So I would say probably uh, late 2021, we can probably have some uh, normalcy and, um, but you know, people are still going to have that social dilemma of wearing a mask and and things of that nature, and, you know, germaphobe type situation. Um, sh sure, right, but the germaphobe situation doesn't, um, I don't think that'll impact the economy. I think um, mostly what it's going to come down to is this, is that people are going to want their summer back. People feel like they didn't have their summer last summer, and I think when lose or draw, people are going to have their summer this year. People aren't going to forego things twice in a row at all. I just don't see it. Yeah. So, if we uh, get the vaccine as we anticipate in January and it's just 15 million doses, I think on the strength of that, and there's any response to it, any clinical response significant in the population to those first 15 million doses, I think um, what's going to happen is is that um, the economy will start opening back up and there's going to be certain individuals that say, you know what, there's a vaccine out there, so if you need it, get it, I'm going to do me. Because a lot of people, you know, they're not even going to want to get the vaccine. What? But since they know that the vaccine's out there, they're going to use that as an opportunity to say, "Hey, I could get on with my life." You know, if if you if you don't if you don't feel comfortable with me not wearing a mask and get your get you a vaccine. You know, so <clears throat> and then I just think I mean two years of a suppressed economy. I mean I don't think anybody any any economy is built to withstand that. Mm -hmm. So I think the economy will probably open by force, if nothing else, because we already see signs with that. That's why there's a rising number of cases right now. People are just um, pretty much tired of the suppressed economy and limiting what they do. People want to go back to restaurants. People want to go back to traveling. So the biggest impact I think a vaccine will have, limited doses or not, is it's mm -hmm. going to build up the confidence. Uh, in the public to go back out there into the world and start doing things again like they once did. Because even some of the biggest shutdown um, people I knew on my social media, they're out. They're traveling again. They're doing, they're doing whatever. I don't know anybody who's stayed home during the duration of this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm in Texas, so <laughs> clarification. Right. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with you, man. Um, like I said, it's just going to give people the confidence, but it's not going to slow down COVID cases from rising. So with that being said, what is the government going to do? Are they going to enforce some type of mandate? Are they going to shut down the economy? That's going to scale back. So then you have to think about that. You know, Joe Biden might have some policies that slow down our, our way of thinking. In yeah, Texas, but at the end might of the day, might be okay. but at the end of the day, then it becomes state specific, right? Because... Even if there's a federal mandate, who's going to enforce it? The federal government doesn't have enough agencies or manpower to enforce any policy that they put on all 50 states, right? Okay. So it's going to be the same old thing, right? Like during the pandemic, if you're in Tennessee, if you're in Texas, you had a better chance of having um, some kind of uh, economic activity. If you're in states like New York or California, and there's a federally mandated uh, uh shutdown or something of that nature then yeah you're more likely for businesses to go out to to shut down and and risk whatever uh, uh comes with that but the caveat to all of this is is that um under the new administration um i mean uh they've made it pretty clear in congress that they want to shut down but then they want some things in place so government support wise for the businesses while they shut down so that's mm -hmm. going to be the difference because I'm hearing some politicians say we want to shut down, but if we can get support from the government, you know, for businesses, you know, you can pay their payroll so the employees don't get laid off. Hey, if you want to do a two week, four week, six week uh, shutdown, 
can everybody be paid for that? And then that'll be a different thing than what we've seen in the past. Because then we don't have to worry about anybody losing their business, people not being able to pay rent, because the government is going to subsidize that uh, until we can lower the cases. Right. I agree with that. But you also have to think about the world, right? So this is a pandemic, and there are a lot of places that we can't go. So that cuts down tourism, right? Yes. That cuts down uh, people having jobs in, in the airline business or um, even, you know, trade commerce and, and things of that nature. So we have to think about what is the world doing, you know. United States, our economy might start picking back up, but they don't have a vaccine in, in China, do they? Um, no, they do have one. They do? Mm-hmm. They, they have one in development. The, in, in development. Yeah, they had the, uh, was it the... A uh, leader of the UAE who used it. I mean, don't misquote me, but some okay. uh, leader in the um, Middle East country actually tried the Chinese vaccine. So they have one. Like everybody's yes. pretty much at the same um, okay. place, right? Okay. Now. Most of the major countries are pretty much at the same pace in terms of uh, vaccine development or a similar pace. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's really good news. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, like I said, I mean, it is a global. You know, it's a pandemic, so we have to make sure that all economies are strong at this point. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, at this point, to get back, to make the economy strong again, we have to focus on the health of everyone first. Yes. And so that's kind of where I'm coming from. So if we could put a mask on, mm -hmm. go to work, I could wear a mask in my office, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, put the mask on for the people that are immune compromised, somebody that's 65 and older uh, with dementia, maybe they get those doses first. And we can go from there. Because as a young person, I have a pretty strong immune system. I feel confident that I could potentially survive COVID-19. And I'm not, I'm not as worried as somebody who's immune compromised. So I feel like, you know, that will put the economy back where it needs to be. Well, what about those that have become underemployed due to the pandemic? Uh, in regards to... Well, where where are they going to be in all of this, right? Like, you know, if I was an engineer for oil and gas company and I got laid off, yeah, and now I'm doing something else, or they, I mean, it's not really being a server because the food industry isn't there. Maybe I'm delivering for DoorDash or something. Yeah. When when will they get their time to shine? You think in all of this? When are they going to be able to come back? Uh, to be honest with you, I feel like it's a great time for somebody in the oil and gas industry to transition over, right? So. Start learning, picking up uh, tips and tricks and, and trades of that could benefit them in the electric vehicle business. Maybe solar energy or, you know. But let's be real, man. We know the money's not the same. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's I mean, not. I mean, I'm telling you, it's not the same. Okay. Well, I mean, at this point, that's what people have to do. They, they have to reinvent themselves. And they have to pick up, you know, like, like we're doing here. This yeah. is our side business. And we're trying to grow it. And people have to come up with new ideas and reinvent themselves every 10 years, by the way. Hey, man, it's just my heart goes out to those people who I know have worked hard to get to the point that they're at and then get knocked, uh, you know, on their behind for, you know, <laughs> reasons that aren't of their own, you know. I mean, yeah. they were at the work, they were performing, they were working hard, they were dedicated, and bam, the pandemic comes, wipes out their job. Yeah, I understand. I mean, anything could wipe out your job, though. A policy could wipe out your yeah. job. Automation could wipe out your job. These well, are things that people have to account for. Automation will wipe out your job. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Eventually. Yeah. So these are things that people have to account for, and we have to become more educated, gain more skill sets, and reinvent ourselves. That's that's the best I can say. Well, then let me ask you this: mm -hmm. since this pandemic. Give me some top three career fields you feel have been exposed during all this. Like, during the pandemic, you're like, man, if you're in these three fields, your money, no matter what. Um, have been exposed as in being laid off? or no, 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 no. Like, opened your eyes. Like, okay. Because uh, I have some, some, some careers I can think of in mind that uh, this pandemic has showed me, like, man, these people are really essential. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because in this pandemic, the jobs have grown. The pay has grown. Yeah. Public health officials, uh, epidemiologists. You know, my wife's an epidemiologist. And 
you know, she's on the front lines right now doing well and she's thriving. So something that people didn't see as important has now become very important to our to our situation right now. Also, uh, firefighters, um, ENT workers, um, heck, uh, grocery store employees. I mean, that's something that is essential that you didn't really, maybe not you, but people didn't think of as an essential worker. So, yeah. Okay. Um, to bring it to the career track uh, part, I will say, yes, public health will have a bigger em em uh, emphasis moving forward. Mm -hmm. Nursing, okay. huge. You know, I think nursing is huge right now. Uh, and, and the pandemic and this has exposed that. And then uh, food supply chain management also. That's that's huge. Those three things I think uh, have kind of um, had their chance to have the spotlight on the stage since the pandemic. And tech. Oh, oh well, if you're in tech, tech, oh, you're golden any <laughs> any day. Because uh, I know somebody that works in the oil and gas industry, mm -hmm. but they're in the technology sector, so mm -hmm. they did not lose their job, which is that's impactful. It's it's diversifying their portfolio basically with job security like if you're an accountant you can be an accountant anywhere so yeah 